Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for coming on stage. And uh, well, it's really hard to give a talk uh, just after this amazing keynote. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to deep dive a little bit more on the technical side of things. I also want to ask you how many of you in the audience are actually using React Native, Expo, or doing any kind of mobile development? Not many. Uh, so, well, um, today we're going to talk about bringing the new React Native architecture to the open source community. And as many of you haven't touched React Native, um, I hope you will still find um, interesting to know what we at Meta have been working on on the native side of things as far as it concerns React. Uh, mandatory slide about myself. Uh, my name is Nicola Corti. Uh, I'm an Android engineer on the React Native team. And you can find me online as Corti Nico on Twitter and on GitHub. So, um, for those of you who are not working on React Native, you might have, I don't know, read on some newsletter or on the buzz online uh, that there's this thing called the React Native new architecture. And you might wonder, what is it? Like, what is this thing? Like, well, it has new in the name, so it's definitely something that we are releasing. We worked a lot on that. And especially, like, if you go on YouTube and search React Native New Architecture, you will find quite some content. A lot of talk. Uh, specifically, I want to point out those. The first one is from React Conf in 2018. So, well, we use the word new, but is not that new. Like, we actually started working on a re-architecture of React Native uh, early in 2018. And the things kept on evolving. Uh, it took us quite some time to fully roll it out. And my colleague Joshua, last year at React Native EU, gave a talk, uh, which is also quite interesting, on how we rolled out such a critical refactoring of React Native internally. And yeah, as you notice from the years, a lot of time has passed. So let me tell you a little bit about the timeline of this re-architecture of React Native. We started in 2018, and we initially thought this would have been just a six-month kind of work. You know, just find the engineers, tweak a couple of things in the internals. Uh, but yeah, that's not the case. And specifically, at our scale, uh, running an application like the Facebook app or other major applications where React Native and React are used so extensively that you, trust me, you will find every possible edge case. Also, product engineers have been squeezing every possible performance gain out of React Native, which made it really hard for us to, you know, sort of change the engine while the plane was flying. But so here we are. End of 2021, the new architecture of React Native has been fully rolled out on uh, the Facebook app. And now, what's next? Well, we don't want to take this for us. At Meta, we are highly committed to open source and releasing our technology to the broader community, as we're doing with React, PyTorch, React Native, and other popular libraries. So then we looked outside, and we said, like, how can we let the people outside of this company use this technology. I mean, it, technically, it was already on main, so you could use it, but we wanted to make it easier for people outside of Meta to use it. So let's see how we did it. But let's do one step back. And again, as I don't have many React Native engineer in the, in the room, you might wonder why, like why we even did this, this work. And if you know a little bit about, about React Native, you probably know what the bridge is. It's a component which is part of the old React Native architecture, which is responsible of doing a lot of uh, JSON communication between the JavaScript layer and the platform layer. We wanted to get rid of it because a lot of the performance uh, drawback of React Native are caused by this component. Moreover, historically, React Native for Android and for iOS we're born as two different projects. And we took a stance to rewrite a lot of the internals using um, shared language, which in this case is C++. This allowed, this allowed us to 
tweak and fix a lot of the differences in the rendering between the two platforms. And also, now we can finally share platform-specific optimizations. For example, we used to have some optimizations only on Android that could not be shared on iOS because we would have had to rewrite them from scratch. We also took a stance, and uh, one of the concerns that engineers reported over and over is the lack of type safety. So we introduced a new component called the CodeGen, which allows us to generate code starting from a specification that the developers provide. And this code is as type safety all uh, on, 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 all the, on all the layers. And also, this uh, opened the door for a lot of new capabilities that will be built on top of the new render and the new architecture of React Native. So when I talk about the new architecture, I'm actually talking about a collection of components, which in the documentation we call pillars. So just walking through those pillars, um, the first one that you will find referred over and over in the docs is the new render, codenamed Fabric. Then we also took a stance of rewriting a bit the native module system, so the mechanism that allows you to go from JavaScript to call platform-specific API of the host platform where you're running. The new native module system is called the Turbo Module. As I said before, we also took a stance and uh, we wanted to give type safety to our new, new model. So we implemented the CodeGen, which takes care of getting a spec file and input and producing uh, output, which is meaningful for, for the platform. And finally, we have a last pillar, which is the bridgeless mode. Once everything is in place and you have all of your components and module on the new architecture, you can finally get rid of the bridge that we still keep for backward compatibility, like you might have libraries which are still not uh, migrated to the new architecture, but once everything is all together, you can finally turn off the bridge. So to let you touch a little bit on how we envision this new architecture to look like, I want to deep dive on a little bit of code for the code gen. So the way how we think this whole mechanism will work is, as I said, the developer will give us a spec file. In this case, uh, we have uh, a, like just an interface with a function, which is answer the ultimate question, uh, which has an input, a string, uh, and returns a number. And the developer will just register this, uh, this module. The crucial part is here. Like we have an information about like, uh, like a method, an intent. So here we're saying that we want to create something that both on Android and, in, and on iOS is able to answer the ultimate question. So the code gen will go from here and will generate a lot of boilerplate code that historically developers have to write manually. So on Android, it means that we will effectively create a Java abstract class with constructors and everything needed and an abstract method that the developer has to implement. So in this case, this is just, uh, again, answer the ultimate question, takes an input a string, and returns a Java double. For iOS, the thing is equivalent. We uh, do generate an Objective-C um, protocol. In this case, it's obviously typed with the types that are specific to the platform. So again, answer the ultimate question, which takes an NS string and returns an NS number. So with the new architecture and working across different platforms, things are a little bit more complicated than just web. I always like joke with my colleagues on React because for them it's super easy. Like you just run on the browser. For us, it's quite more complicated. We need to, we need to compile Java, we need to compile Kotlin, we need to compile C++, we need to compile Objective-C, and there is the whole thing of JavaScript on top of it. So we had to ship a lot of changes to our build pipeline. Specifically, there is also another subtle difference because internally at Meta, we use Buck for building everything. While we can't expect that React Native engineers outside of Meta will use Buck for everything, you might want to use your own build system. Specifically, in open source, we want to make sure you can use the platform-specific build tool. That means that on Android, you should be able to use Gradle. We built tooling on top of it, and we exposed uh, CMake files to let you build C++ files. 
For Java and Kotlin files, we extended our React Native um, Gradle configuration, providing a React Native Gradle plugin, which is going to be the entry point for all the uh, React Native logic, and is going to replace the old React.Gradle file we used to have uh, that grew quite, quite a lot and became like unmaintainable. For iOS, similarly, we spent a lot of time building custom CocoaPods logic. So on React Native iOS, you will integrate everything with CocoaPods, and now there are like custom Ruby scripts that takes care of uh, implementing the new architecture for you. I also want to talk a little bit about a couple of other changes that we're shipping with the new architecture, uh, which is uh, first, Hermes. Uh, Hermes is our in-house JavaScript engine. And historically, uh, well, while it worked very well for us internally, it was a bit harder to use externally. So as we are shipping a lot of changes, we thought like, hey, how about we make things easier to use and uh, more like connected each other so that they don't uh, break when they interact. So Hermes is currently the recommended engine for the new architecture. So when you find the, the documentation for the new architecture, you will find Hermes uh, is the recommended engine. Please use it. Also, we shipped a change called the bundled Hermes. So since React Native 69, every version of React Native comes with its own JavaScript engine that we built for you. And we sort of uh, crafted it at the same time when we crafted the React Native version. So we know that the two engines are compatible with each other. And starting from React Native 070, Hermes is also the default engine for React Native. So all the new projects have been, uh, that you will create with the React Native CLI will contain the Hermes engine enabled. The Hermes team has been put a lot of effort on improving the engine and is also quite responsive on user feedback. So if, you're, if this doesn't work for your project, drop us a message. Um, another topic which is quite hot in the mobile space is modern languages. And engineers from all over the places ask us to support uh, more languages and make sure that our um, API looks nice. So on, on the website, well, obviously, a lot of people want to use TypeScript. And when we released the first iteration of the new architecture docs, uh, the number one comment was, I don't want to use Flow to write my specs which I totally understand. Like, you might have a fully TypeScript project, and we can't ask you to just add flow for one file for your spec files. So I'm happy to announce that since React Native 68, um, we release support for TypeScript in the code gen. So now you can write TypeScript all over the places. Also, there is an ongoing effort for uh, providing better maintenance of our TypeScript types in React Native. Uh, so uh, hopefully, uh, we will have more to share on this side in the future. On the Android side of things, a lot of people have been asking us about Kotlin support. So luckily, thanks to how Kotlin is structured, uh, Kotlin is fully supported by React Native. You can write your Kotlin code, native Kotlin code, as you wish. Uh, but we wanted to make the documentation better. So we started a community effort to update our website to be bilingual. So now it's nearly completed. And I think 80% of the website fully is uh, translated to have examples in both Java and Kotlin. And you can expect the new app template to be updated to be in Kotlin, because we think that this is the way that the Android ecosystem will move forward, and we are going to follow this, this approach. On iOS instead, well, number one requested language obviously is Swift, and here, well, sadly, the situation is a little bit more complicated due to interoperability between Swift and C++. Um, rest assured that we're looking into it. Um, but yeah, like I don't have um, nothing to share on this point uh, at this stage. So let me tell you a little bit about timeline and versions. Uh, just to give you like, an idea of where we are and where we think we will go. So the, the first version of the new architecture was released in React Native 68, which was released beginning of this year. Uh, disclaimer, the new architecture is still considered experimental. We'll find banners on the website saying that 
we're zeroing out, we are tweaking things, we are hearing your feedback, we want to know what does it work for you, what doesn't work for you. In 69, we shipped a lot of changes related to Hermes, as I said before, plus 69 is the first version of React Native which supports React 18. And I'm gonna talk about React 18 a little bit more in the next slide. Then um, we, I think last week, we released React Native 70, which contains a lot of tooling uh, to help you use uh, the new architecture more uh, seamlessly. Specifically, Hermes as default, as I said before, but also auto linking for Android, which takes care of finding your Android uh, libraries and the linking on both the Java layer and the C++ layer. CMake support and unified code gen config. I will not deep dive too much into those, uh, those points. You will find them in the release notes for React Native 70. But those were highly requested features that will make the new architecture easier to adopt. On 71, there is a lot of work already lined up on main. And you can find it like if, if you just check the, the branch. But we are working really hard on simplifying the template. The number one concern after the TypeScript support uh, is that React Native engineers don't want to touch C++ code. And I can totally understand that. Like, no one probably wants to touch C++ code unless you're doing something really, like, you know, uh, hardcore. Uh, but yet, our architecture is written in C++, so we need to find a way to let you hook into this world. And we are working on simplifying the template as much as possible and streamline the C++ surface so that you will see only a couple of lines where you can register your libraries and do only the necessary configurations you need. And more to come, which is not landed on main yet. And I hope to, to have you know, opportunities to share that in the future. And what's beyond that? Well, to the infinity and beyond, I'm actually impressed by the amount of feedback we received from the community from 68 on. Like a lot of those changes have landed just because people shouted at us and said like, hey, this is not working. This, it's awesome, but let's make it more awesome. So I think this year and this time is awesome for people in the React community because we are hearing you so much. Like, we are here coming at conferences, doing AMAs, doing podcasts, whatever, online, just to hear what's in people's mind, what works and what doesn't work for native. So I mentioned I wanted to talk a little bit about React 18. So I'm sure like a lot of you knows about React 18 then. Uh, there has been a lot of uh, new features. Uh, which are often referred as con concurrent React, and new APIs like use transition and so on. Uh, and while those are easy to use on web, we want to let people on mobile being able to use them as easily as on web. So a question that I get often asked is like, how do React and React Native interact each other? Like who, which version can, can, can I bump? So React and React Native are like the, the versioning is tightly coupled. React Native ships with a version of React internally. So you can't just go in your package.json and bump the React version. Things will go wildly. So, um, and the versions are aligned in this way. If you are on React Native 68 or 67 or anything before that, you are essentially on React 17. We are hearing people that like they are on React Native 68 and they update React to 18 and nothing works or things works widely. Uh, that's not recommended. Like follow the version provided by React Native. If you want to use React 18 because now it's been out since a while and you want to try it, you want to use those new APIs and so on, you need to be on 69 on. So where is the catch here? The catch is those new APIs, like the all concurrent React set of features and start transition and so on, they work only if you have the new architecture enabled. If you are on 69 or 70 and you disable the new architecture, you are basically running in legacy mode. You are not, like those APIs are empty for you. They will not have any effect. So it's crucial 
now that you start looking into the new architecture of React Native because you will lose the old React train then we keep on evolving. So please, if you have React Native application in, in your org, make sure, like at least bring them the voice that this thing is changing and they will have to look into the React Native new architecture sooner or later. Now talking about docs and material, like how can you actually migrate and what we prepared for you. And, um, and yeah, like, I want to stress how like, in docs are important for us. Like, it's, it's really all about the docs. Practically, the, the React Native architecture was available since React Native 64 or so, so like quite a lot of time ago. And I remember hearing this podcast, like the React Native show, where uh, they, they shouted out to some libraries saying like, oh yeah, they're using the new architecture, how like, they use these new APIs, but there is no docs. Like, this new architecture is awesome, but if we don't explain to like, the, the whole community how to use it, it's basically useless. So that's why we spend a lot of time working on the official docs. You will find it on reactnative.dev in the new architecture section. We also have an entire new section called migrating to the new architecture, which has step-by-step -step migration guides and guides you on how to update your project. As we worked on this, we also took, uh, took quite some time to uh, update our internal documentation. You will find a new section called architecture, which contains internal docs on how React Native works. For example, how the render works, uh, all the phases of our rendering pipeline, and so on. Uh, those kind of docs have been requested a lot by the community, and we never had the time to just write them and polish them. So now they are available, please use them. They're more advanced, but people that work on the internals might find them useful. Uh, we worked on the new app template, as I said before. We're also trying to simplify that as much as possible. But the idea is that we envision the new app template as the entry point for the new architecture. So if you now in this audience want to try it, how would you do that? So with the React Native init command, you can just create a new project. And on iOS, the entry point is the pod install command. So we added a variable called new arc enabled one uh, that allows you to enable the new architecture. And this will essentially set up your project to fully work with the new architecture. You can just run it with run iOS as you will do normally. On Android, similar thing. We do have a file called Gradle properties, which contain a similar variable, new arc enabled, is set by default to false. So again, as I said before, new architecture is not enabled by default. We are still evaluating it. We are collecting feedback. We will turn it on at a certain point in the future. Uh, so you just change it to true and you can run it with uh, run Android. When you run it, Metro, our bundler, will tell you on the console that things is running with fabric true and concurrent root set to true. So you have all the power of React 18 uh, on your engine then. Um, other initiatives that we worked on. First, the new architecture working group. So from the experience of the React 18 working group, we started the, a similar working group, which is like a discussion only GitHub repository where you can jump on and uh, share your ideas, ask questions, share your libraries, say if you're migrating to the new architecture or directly just ask us questions. It's divided in sections uh, where like, again, you can find uh, information about docs and so on. Uh, this uh, group is closed, uh, although we are accepting applications. So there is a link in, in the homepage. You can just click on it, fill in, and we will like evaluate your applications and, and add you. And then samples, because uh, a lot of people told us a lot of docs, but uh, let's show us something that actually runs. So we do have a couple of sample repository. The first one is the application sample, uh, which contains a collection of branches, which explains you step by step how to migrate an app from 67 to 68, or from 67 to 69, and so on, with commit by commit what we're doing and how we're turning on things. And similarly, uh, we have a library sample, sample repo, which explains uh, how to create a 
native module or a native components library, which is compatible with both architecture, because you might just want to release a library that works for everyone. And a lot of the popular libraries uh, we have in React Native are already migrated and already compatible with the new architecture. And a lot of are starting to, to keep up, like start working on it right now. Uh, but again, if you have a library or you have an application which is blocking you, let us know. And now to wrap up, I really hope that in, I don't know, six months from now, one year from now, uh, or whenever, when I search React Native New Architecture on Google, I will just find your story. Like, um, tell us, tell us how it went. It went well, it went badly. Or, well, like, hopefully you will share us your success. But um, I think that historically, the React Native team uh, has been really engaged with the community. Um, but there is definitely a lot of space for, for improvements. And we are here to hear what we can do better. So I'm here today also to collect your feedback, your migration story. If you want to tell, tell, like, tell me about anything related to React Native, mobile, I'm more than happy to chat and hear your feedback. And with this, uh, well, I want to thank you very much for listening. And I also want to mention that, again, we're fully committed to open source and contributions to any of our tools being, okay. Uh, being Metro, Hermes, React, or React Native are more than welcome. So thank you very much for listening.